wonderful example that I received about two years ago from a presentation. The wonderful individual went into detail and I remembered every single aspect of it. I'm going to give it to you. What I'm about to tell you occurred in a very small town Middle East, on the border of Iraq and Iran. And as you know, there's a lot of problems there with people who practice Islam, persecution of Christians, and so forth. And it was so bad that the law enforcement couldn't deal with it very much. And there was a man with his little five-year-old son traveling and trying to make it home. But they had to check into a motel room. And this man wore a crucifix on his neck and was not ashamed of it. But someone saw it. And they checked into a motel, him and his little boy, his son, five years old, and was watching TV. And a door busted open. And the man was laying in bed with his son who was about to go to sleep. And the man came over to the man that was laying down, the Christian man and his son and shot him with a pistol in front of that five-year-old boy and shot him in the head. And the man stood there and the boy grabbed a hold of his father and he yelled out, Father, don't leave me. Don't leave me. Please come back. Please come back. Don't go. That little boy got off that bed and ran over to the man that shot his father in the head. The man had his right hand by his side that little boy put both of his hands on that one man's hand and picked his hand up with that pistol in his hand and placed it on the center of his forehead and said take me to my father take me to my father now where my father goes I go also please take me now that man turned around and left that little boy and his dead father in that motel room. It went to the edge of town and 
and thought what he did to that little boy and his father for no reason other than his Christian belief. And that man went to the edge of town standing and overlooking a garbage dump 15 foot wall it was night a full moon this is all documented from these people this is a true story listen to me that man dove off the wall and landed face down in the garbage until the sun came up he never went to sleep He pulled himself out of the garbage. He felt like the worst piece of trash on the face of the earth. In front of that little five-year-old boy that wanted him to shoot him between the eyes just like he killed his father and take me home take me to my father now that man turned around and continued to walk outside of town lost and confused he found a water A water hydrant. And he opened up the valve and he washed his face and he saw the sun come up. And there was a bus coming by. And as you know, all you have to do is flag them down and that's all you do. Don't need a ticket. Throw some coins in. He went in the back of the bus. And he sat there and looked out the window. And he thought about that little boy, what he just did. And to the man that he didn't know and took his life because of his religion. As the bus came in to the destination, the man got off the bus. And it was Sunday morning. And as he was walking, he saw a Christian church from a distance. And they don't have a lot of money in these small towns on the border of Iraq and Iran. And someone took a wooden crucifix and put it at the top of the church took some aluminum foil and wrapped it up in aluminum foil so that when the sun hits it it will sparkle and shine the light and that light 
shine in that man's eyes. Constantly, he put his right hand, the one that held the pistol, he put it up there to block the light, and he couldn't block the light. So he went there with his pistol. And when he walked through the door, the people were singing songs and hymns and making melody in their hearts to the Lord. And he sat there on the back row, the pier, he sat there and looked down and was crying. Then the service was over, the people, they left, and the man sat there, he sat there with his gun in his pocket, and the minister came up, evangelist, representative of that small community church came up. And he said, the service is over. Can I help you? And he looked up slowly to the right side, looked down in the eye of that evangelist. And you know what he said? I killed a Christian yesterday. And I got on the bus. And it led me here. The evangelist was shocked. Because he got a phone call that morning from a woman that attended that church that her husband was killed in front of her five-year-old son. And then that man said this. After I killed him, the little boy grabbed my hand, placed the gun between his eyes wanted me to take him to his father. And I felt like a piece of trash, the most horrible trash. And I got on the bus this morning and your cross shining in my eyes and I came here to receive your message and that man he backed away he thought he was going to be killed but you know what happened The man that he killed and the mother of that little boy came through the door. She came through the door because the woman of the church overheard everything that that man was stating and called her that she came. She came by herself 
stop with her boy. And she listened to what that man had to say. And this is what she heard. What has happened to me to take another man's life that I do not know over his belief in a different Messiah? I don't understand anymore. And when that boy said, take me to my father, I felt like trash. And I threw myself in the trash. And I got up and I washed my face. I got into the bus and I came here and I saw the crucifix. And I came here for a message from you. What is your message to me now? And the man stood back. And he said, it's very simple. Father, forgive him, for he knows not what he do. At that time, the woman came over. She said, I'm the wife of a loving husband that you took from me yesterday, last night. You took my husband away. That man started shaking. He was shaking. His hands was trembling. Tears was running. The man stood up. And fainted. And fell out on that floor of the church. The woman, she ran to take her handkerchief and some water and put it over his forehead. And the gun fell out on the floor. And the man opened up his eyes. And he stated, why you do this? You know what she said? Because I forgive you. Unconditionally, I forgive you as Jesus Christ and the Father has forgiven me, I forgive you. Will you think about that just for a moment? 
The woman turned and walked away. The two men, they talked. No one called the police. This is a private matter now. couple weeks went by. The man didn't leave that little village, that little town. And the people came. They had a meeting at the church. And the woman and that little boy came. They all knew it was him that killed that little boy's father, that wonderful woman's husband. And he stood up and walked forward. And he turned around and he yelled out to all of them, yelled, What must I do? What must I do? What must I do? How can I be forgiven? Of my sins, I killed an innocent man. I took a woman's husband. I took a beautiful boy's father. What can I do? The people gathered around him. And you know what they said? Repent. Confess in Jesus Christ. And be baptized for remissions of your sins. Romans 6, Romans 6, they shouted. He said, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know what you're saying. And I don't... I don't know what you're talking about. Water. What prevents me from being baptized for the remissions of my sins? They all went outside. There was a stream of water. And that man and the minister went down. The man, that man repented from his sins and confessed in Jesus Christ and got down in that water and was born again. You think about that. You know what happened two hours later? (laughs) The woman of the man that he killed the woman's husband that he killed invited him for dinner and the little boy was there hiding on the left side of his mother's leg that little boy said come we eat together I'm hungry let's go now let's go now you see 
things are different here in America. Things are different in the UK. And things are different on the border of Iraq and Iran. That woman showed unconditional love, unconditional forgiveness. And the little boy, he finally realized that he was hungry. His father was gone and he was hungry for a father. And would you believe six months later that woman and that man was married in that little bitty tiny church where there was a creek, water, in the back from a little bitty tiny cross made out of wood wrapped up in aluminum foil. Isn't life strange? I think it's stranger than you can possible imagine. And you think I'm going to worry about a woman that's having problems or men that's having problems? Government that is having problems? I'm not having no problems. Are you having problems? What about the little boy? The night that they was watching TV, that man came in there and killed his father. He jumped up off that bed and grabbed both of his hands on that man's hand with that pistol pointed it between his eyes and said take me to my daddy take me to my daddy now you know what I always told you change the way you look at things in the way that you're looking at it will change. That man changed the way he was looking at himself and the way he was looking at himself changed. Changed. Conditional forgiveness, unconditional forgiveness. I read a lot of stories, I watched a lot of videos, but when I saw that one a couple of years ago, I said, One day I'm going to do a video about that one. I love you all. Be safe, everyone. Continue in prayer. Apply forgiveness. You may not apply it unconditional, but you can apply it conditional. And that's pretty close enough to pass the test. 
You can do this. Tell your loved ones today I love you. If I've done something to you, please forgive me as I've forgiven you. Let's get through this together, shall we? Remember you have always been loved and you will always be loved. And thank you for being yourself. Please continue in prayer. And may God continue to watch over you and your loved ones.